I like watching people support. I find it mildly amusing. I especially love landlord tenant ones. They mostly beef about security deposits. This one was a little clickbaity hounding a tenant. So I'd like to see exactly what happened here. These are the plaintiffs, Jason Lang and Louis Lubinacci. Jason says the defendant is landlord owes him money. That's why they're here today. Probably the security closet. Constantly get into the bedroom and sleep in the bed. And the defendant did nothing about it. They moved out. The uncaring defendants retaliating against them by withholding their security. And they're suing for every penny of the $3,781.12 they're owed. That's a pretty high security deposit. This is the defendant, Robert Ingenito. He says the plaintiff secretly moved in a third tenant who suffered from dementia. She stayed home all day harassing his family, the mailman, and the neighbors. He eventually told them they had to leave. They left the place a blooming mess, and he has every right to keep their security, to pay for the cleanup. He's accused of hounding a tenant. The defendant was filed a camera suit for $5,000 for violating the terms of his lease. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case of the dog. The plaintiff say the defendant is holding their security hostage and he has some nerve because his dog was sleeping on their bed while they lived there. That's but gross. But the defendant says the plaintiffs are pigs. It's the case of a like dog dog. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome, Jason man. Lang and Louis Lupinacci, you are suing Robert Ingenito. You're former landlord for $3,781.12 for the return of your security deposit, your broker fee, pain and suffering, and loss of work. You are counterclaiming $5,000 because they violated the lease. Tell me what's going on. Small claims court. Uh, I have a copy of the lease here. Okay. And, uh, I have a copy what of What happened the... here? So you find this place, and this place was what? The other half of a house that he was living in? Correct. All right. Did you have your own kitchen, your own bathroom, your own everything? Yes. All right, so tell me about it. You're living, living there, landlords and tenants uh, living together, uh, very well, tricky. There was a dog in the, in the house, and uh, I kept going through the apartment. How did it go into the apartment? Don't you have a separate lock? Well, the dog opened it with his mouth. So how was the dog getting in if your door was locked? I mean, my dog opens uh, the door. It's really but nice. My, it's my really, dog doesn't open the door when the door is locked. It's a really nice neighborhood, Your Honor. So we okay, so you lock. choose not to lock it. All right, yes. and what was that? Yeah, lock the door. Uh, the door was coming in on its own and just laying down, going in the bed, throwing up on the floor, things like that. Why don't you just lock the door? Uh, I don't. I like the dog, actually. Oh, I okay. Just, I, I, <laughs> so why are you talking about this? I thought you were going to tell me how unlivable yeah. the place was. I have allergies, Your Honor. Okay, then why don't you lock the door? Well, if you have allergies before moving in, you should have seen if there was a dog or not. And Mr. Lupinacci must have left it open. Okay. Kind of seems like that's under your control, though, because you kind of like the dog. But go on. What else was wrong? Yeah. Why did you leave the apartment? Allergies. Okay, so did you did you have a, a lease or you they, didn't have a lease? Uh, we had a we had a, a lease, yes. So did you give a month's notice? Yes. All right, and uh, yes, yeah, so important. If you're going to move out, in this case, right? The month's notice was fine. No. You need right, to so give notice have, when you're moving fine, out. But when you leave, do you do a walkthrough? Usually, it's thirty days, uh, but check Mr. local Robert jurisdiction. With you or no? No, I wasn't there. All right, you did a walkthrough and you wrote a check. Yes. How much? Twelve hundred. The entire amount of the deposit. Yes. But okay. then the next night, you or the next day, you stopped payment. Yes. Why? Because once I discovered what was wrong with the apartment, doing a finer once inspection. Once you discovered what was the it. Balls the night before. There wasn't enough light in the room. Well, then why do you do an inspection when there's then no light in the room? Then do it the next day. Because are you sure it's not that your wife got mad at you and said, "I can't believe you wrote these guys a track after all we've been through"? That has something to do with it. Yeah, because that's how it smells <laughs> to a woman who's been married 23 years. All right, that's how it you smells. You can't do that. You can't send so it and then cancel it. And in good faith that the apartment. It's not in good faith. You issued the check because you were done with your business with them, and then you change your mind. Okay. So when you have a rental, you do a move-in inspection. You take move-in photos, you usually do like a checklist of the condition of the premises. Then before move-out, for instance, a tenant gives their notice, you schedule a pre-move-out inspection. And you go through the unit and say, hey, this, this, and this needs to be addressed. Then you do a final walkthrough. If those things are not addressed or there's still outstanding issues, then you need to get bids or act do actual repairs and deduct those things from the security deposit. Now, usually the standard is reasonable where 
wear and tear. So if the tenants return the unit in substantially the same condition that they got it leased in to begin with, then there's not much to deduct from. But you have sometimes cleaning and other things that have to be done on the unit. That gets deducted from the security deposit and the remainder gets sent. Usually you have time to do this, depending on the jurisdiction. So it seems like he rushed it. His wife probably got mad and then he went in and did the inspection. And that's outside of the order of operations of this entire thing. So it doesn't make sense what he did. What right gives you the right to change your mind? What damages did they leave behind? Or what, what I guess it would only be for I damages. Have a, I have a video that okay. I can show you with some of the proof. Okay. Okay. That'll help. Can we put that up on the screen, please? Uh, this is a video of our previous tenants and the damage they've done to the apartment. This is where they had the couch. You can see the difference in color variation, how dirty it is. I can, but I also see dirty area yeah. where a couch is. That doesn't look that bad. Um, as you can tell, there are various stains on the walls. That doesn't look that bad. Doors. I don't the door handle has been glued back on incorrectly. What, what is it I'm supposed the to do? The door handle there? should be facing, facing the other way. Other Does that look like there's tomato sauce right there? The glue, okay. that's weird. It tomato keeps going. Sauce. There's tomato sauce. I don't think that's going to tie you to 1200 bucks. You can see no. the staining of the food all over here. Do you see it? Stop, stop this thing. Um, Wait, now, do you, I hear you talking, but I don't see the things you say I'm supposed to see. So I need you to come over here and point to them. Sure. Stuck in here. Stains. Uh, I was supposed to see that in the video? Yes, you can see it when you look at it up close. There's food, leftover food debris, and that was all over the house. Leftover food debris. Okay. The, door, the shower knobs were broken and had to be replaced. Can you show me that in the food video? Food debris is a really weird I word. Video. I don't we'll like it. The other, one of the other okay, videos. don't move. You don't like food debris? What's this a picture of? It comes to the conclusion that they were probably smoking inside of the apartment. There's evidence of some type of sticky resin, possibly illegal drugs. <laughs> uh, it's just raw in the kitchen. You can see okay. over here, there's some leftover incense, once again, produces smoke. No smoking was one of I the I don't rules. think that's what no smoking you know, means. Say, it's pretty evident that they were breaking multiple the unit looks fine. Violations. I don't. Uh, it looks it fine. Okay. Go ahead, um, go ahead and go back to the podium because we can't hear you when you're not mic. Sure. Oh, there's a third video. When did you take this one? This one would have been the last one I took after the fifth. Notice some more stuff after the tenants had left. These knobs were all loose and busted. They don't look loose and busted. Trauma. To what? That's, you can't object. There's nothing to object. He's, he's putting on his case. No objection. Okay, I've seen enough. So the only thing that, that you think is damaged are the knobs of the shower, right? Everything else is cleaning? No. What is damaged besides that? The front door handle it was, was on the It was pretty video, clean. It was on backwards and you were unable to turn the lock. But how come you didn't turn it for me so I could see all that in your video? I didn't even see it glued on or whatever you're talking about. I didn't see anything. I did have to replace it. It has been Do replaced. Do you have the receipt for replacing I have receipts for everything that has been replaced. Okay. Let okay. me see the receipts that you have. Sure. And wh were you angry to see them go or happy to see them go? That's what a stupid decision question. decision was it for them to go? It was my decision. Obviously, okay. he was so happy to see them go. I was just going like there because of the dog that he's making that up. Completely. All right. Why did you want to see your tenants go? They had an illegal tenant living with them for the entire five months. No, 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 no. If you believe there's an unauthorized off, you have to immediately address that. You don't say they've had someone illegally living there for the full five months because he's not disputing there was back rent. So these tenants are paying rent and he's saying, oh, there was someone living there the full five months that was not authorized, not on the lease. That should have immediately addressed as soon as they discovered it. Otherwise, it can be deemed a waiver. Like, well, you knew they were there and you still kept collecting rent and you you did nothing about it. That's not how you address unauthorized occupants. If you're a landlord and you have reason to believe that there's unauthorized occupants, you immediately try to address it. Either issue out the proper notice and terminate the tenancy, or you confront the tenant about it. You don't just go, they had unauthorized occupants the full time. You waived it almost. Yes, it was a violation of clause three of the contract. Okay. And, uh, um, and how do you know she was living there? You saw her all the time, you're living in the other she half. She was there more than they were. Okay. Uh, did you have any problems with her? Yes, we did. What were the we problems? had numerous problems. On three separate occasions, there were ambulances in front of my house with emergency personnel disturbing the peace, sometimes for mm. no apparent Wait, reason. who was disturbing the peace? Well, they you were. You mean it's, it's upsetting to have an ambulance in front of your house? Yes, and they were blocking the street, and my neighbors were taking notice of these things. Yeah. Go on. That'll happen. Um, she would harass the mailman for ma her mail. 
She would harass. what? How do you harass a mailman for mail? She would call from the upper deck and ask if she had any mail. Harassing the mailman is not necessarily harassing you. you. Times, There's harassing. a difference between so being annoyed and law. being harassed. She would really harass me. Yes. Really? Being, so being so severely you know, annoyed repetitively could be harassment, okay. yes. but... Sometimes well, I would walk into my front door. Did you have from the mailman saying he felt terribly harassed by her by asking it wasn't just him the of all things, where's the mail, or do I have mail? No. Okay. Let me hear from your wife. Talk to me. Um, so they moved in on December 1. When they signed the contract, it was supposed to be two individuals, Jason and How Lois. soon did mom come in, according to you? Maybe like within two weeks, we noticed that she was there. And again, kind of not in figuring that she's living there. Like she's I think he knows night. that the lady I was said there. To my husband. I'm like, I think she's living He's off there. He's probably going to deny it. never her leaving. Her and Lewis were left home all day alone. Jason okay. does own a taxi company, and so he was out driving taxis. But he lives like, there. He could be there left all, day all day long. Maybe they were left alone. Lewis is a grown man. Why are you... I don't know what that means. What is the relationship between the two of them? You have to ask them. What is the relationship? We're best friends. Okay. Um, are you somehow his guardian or something? I'm his payee. Payee from who's paying? SSI. Okay. That's now, weird. When you leave and he gives you a check, how long did it take you to go to the bank? Uh, yeah, you should run to minute, the bank in minute, situations like minute. this. It was a minute. Okay, when did you find out that he stopped payment? Uh, when I checked my bank account. Right, and so did he call you in that interim and tell you, hey, by the way, I stopped no. payment on the check again? No, he didn't. All right, so what do you say to him when you realize that he stopped payment? Uh, I called him up and asked him why, mm -hmm. and he said there was a problem with the, uh, the apartment, and uh, he wasn't going to make the payment. Let me ask you a question. How old was that carpet? One year. Okay. And did you attempt to have it shampooed? I did. By whom? Royal Carpet Care. How'd that go? It went great. Oh, so everything's fine. So a shampoo took fine. care of it. Okay. So... If a shampoo took care of it, and all that I see there is normal wear and tear, then what would entitle you, if you're out $109 on the carpet, what would entitle you to keep $1,200? Yeah. So what is better? He doesn't um, have a small an apartment entitlement. where you live alone or a big house where you live with your landlord? A small apartment, sure. Really? You can have a big yeah, house you with a pool? your landlord. No, I prefer my own space. Okay, what do you say, ma'am? A small apartment, no doubt. Yeah. Anybody pick the house? I, I pick the house. If I, I pick the house because I don't know. Maybe the guy, the landowner, would give me. He would support me in what I do, and just like, just see <laughs> me and just. Like, what? Just like a staring at parent? You for the rest of your life, going on. The, right. They won't Jonah's feed you. Home. First of all, I have a checklist here that was signed by Jason and Lewis, attesting oh. to the condition of the apartment before they moved in. Okay. Okay. See that. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. You want to have the move-in inspection checklist. Usually there's three columns. There's the move-in column, the pre-move-out walkthrough, and then the final walkthrough. Usually you do a pre-move-out walkthrough and put the tenant on notice of what needs to be addressed. Then you do a final walkthrough. If those items are not addressed or there's still substantial damage, then you deduct it from the security deposit. You are supposed to give tenant the opportunity to address these things. That's very helpful. That actually, that's good. Go ahead. I also, also have receipts for all the things that had to be replaced. Show me all of your receipts. Sure thing. He's organized. The, the it might not be that compelling. Break. How does that allow Because you? we signed a contract. And in so, that contract, it stipulates that when they When someone breaches a contract, you were entitled to your damages. Yes. The damages were the short shower knobs and the door knobs. No. And the, last key. the damage is zero because you're responsible for fixing them anyway. Uh, okay. okay, this so is where I do have some heat for the judge. If the landlord's responsible for fixing them, oftentimes, though, tenants will not tell landlords what's wrong. Hey, the thing's not working. A lot of times tenants in these kind of, you know, contentious relationships will withhold information or withhold repair requests. That being said, if the knobs weren't working, could have been from really old age, and that falls on the landlord. It's really, I see in this instance, it would be really hard to prove that the doorknob and the shower handles were inoperable or broken as a result of the tenant. Unless you had really good thorough move-in photos and video that show that they were operable and then for some reason they were inoperable and it seemed suspicious how they became inoperable. But given that the rest of the unit is pretty clean, it doesn't seem like the tenants act in any form of retaliation, like intentionally trying to damage things. They probably were rendered inoperable from old age, so that would likely fall on him. Security deposit? Did he take the smoke detector? Yes, he took a, a smoke detector. Did you take missing. a smoke detector? No. 
as well as a he towel. Brought, uh, that one he brought up. Did the towel bar break? Not that I know of. Oh, come on, you know for your towel bar. As a person, it's your apartment. You know whether the towel bar breaks. Just, just level with me. Yes. Okay, well, then why are you lying? Uh, he probably lied about the smoke detector. Okay, how long was Rosemary living with you guys? Oh, who, you're not his mom. You're his mom. No, who are you? Is, Who's is, that lady? This is Rosemary Polanco's friend. Oh, I'm she's sorry. Where's Rosemary? Just, I thought she was Rosemary. Rosemary's in, she, in the home. Was she living? I don't think she'd be a witness no. that the judge would hear Can from. Can I see the original lease? See, how long were they living there? Five months. In those five months, did you ever uh, send a notice of violation that they had another person living there or start eviction yeah, proceedings or anything did like that? that? In uh, approximately February 1st, I asked, I told them that Rosemary had to leave. And when they explained like to me they had no place later, to put her, month and I half later. told them by March 1st that they had to move out by April 1st. Okay. Lisa, we just, we January, just put her back February, in the home. March, uh, April. Okay, so. I, I also have proof well, you say of, put her back in the home. She was living there, right? No. Well, she they moved out end of April, I guess. Okay. They moved out early yeah, December. for $5,000. Other than repeatedly saying they violated the lease, they violated the lease. How are you out $5,000 because they, it's quote, not. violated the lease? I'm not, Your Honor. Yeah, I was happy not. to keep the security deposit, but when he... You're not entitled to the security deposit. Everything I've seen does not entitle you to $1,200. The so unit looked clean. To keep the $109 by his own video. The cleaning. His own and evidence didn't help him. And tear, and I find it bolstered the, plaintiff the case of the tenant. Thank there you, you go. Yeah. In this case, I think that, that that's a pretty fair and reasonable ruling. She did give him credit for cleaning the carpet. Um, but the rest of it, I, I don't think would have fallen on. Maybe cleaning the unit probably could have been deducted, but there really was not much to clean. So he was deducting, uh, trying to keep the full security deposit seen retaliatory by the landlord. The, he didn't have grounds to uh, deduct that. He didn't have any back rent, it seems like. The only damage is really the carpet. It seemed kind of fine to me, but yeah, it was dirty. You need to shampoo it. This goes to show so even though you do have, you know, maybe more paperwork, it's the quality of your paperwork that really matters in cases of these security deposit disputes. So good thing to have is a move out checklist, inspection report, both the landlord and tenant should be there. Then you wanna have good move in photos. And then you wanna do a pre move on inspection, give the tenant the opportunity to address, you know, certain things, certain cleaning issues. Maybe the tenant could have cleaned the carpet themselves, um, handled the door handle issue, the shower knob issue that could have been addressed then. Then, then do a final move on inspection. And in this case, the landlord's own videos show that there wasn't that much wrong with it. So I think the judge made a pretty fair ruling here. In some jurisdictions, if you withhold a security deposit, you can get penalized, you know, two, three times the amount of security deposit. The landlord can get punished for that. If it seems like it's retaliatory. In this case, he did have a lot of receipts. I just don't think that they all fell on the responsibility of the tenant. They seem to be, you know, it's reasonable wear and tear, maybe things that he wanted to fix up, you know, in anticipation of a new tenant to make it more leasable. All in all, I agree with the judge's ruling on this. And I think that the tenant should have received a substantial portion of the security deposit back. But that wasn't so bad. I've seen far worse unit conditions when tenants move out. Uh, let this be a lesson to everybody. Well, document, move in and move out procedures.